What's up everybody and welcome to the biggest drift event that there's ever been in the world, Drift Masters Round 6 Poland. It's right about now that I normally turn to Martin Richards and go like, how do you feel mate? Here goes nothing. Something's very broken for car mate, we're going to need Wi-Fi break. I am the logistics coordinator for the weekend. That's that's the job, mate. Listen, how much these boys talk and they don't get any work done, it's just a, a recipe. That's it. Talk loads, don't do all. Sorry, don't do nothing. That's the recipe for life right around here, isn't it? to describe it other than it's just insane isn't it? It's pretty cool, you know? I've never seen drifting on this kind of scale. I don't think anybody has. It's nuts. What's happening everybody? So we have made it to Poland. We are here at the PGE Stadium um, in the center of Warsaw for the final round of the Drift Masters 2023 season. Super excited to be invited back by Drift Masters. Huge thank you to them for making it happen. What can I say about this event other than, wow, it's just gonna be insane. I don't really feel like I've taken the whole thing in yet. Uh, I, won't, I don't feel like it will really feel real until like all the fans are here and uh, the event gets underway. But for the moment, we're just about to start practice. Um, we've got qualifying tonight and then the main event starts tomorrow, which is Saturday. So I never felt or thought in my wildest dreams in 15 years that I've been drifting that drifting would end up in such a massive stadium like this. Uh, as a dedicated drift event. Obviously, over the years, we've done various different things around other events with drifting. So we've been in a stadium before and done drifting uh, events like WRC um, and stuff like that. But to be here for a dedicated one-off drift event where the Drift Masters have put tarmac down, they've brought in all the infrastructure. We've got fireworks, you know, fire cannons. Uh, it's just insane and uh, 60 drivers get to participate in this event so yeah it's incredible so yeah i'm gonna head out head out on track in a minute begin practice and uh hopefully fingers crossed we can get the ps working pretty good around here i i kind of like these stadium style tight battle events so yeah feeling uh feeling good going into it and uh hopefully we can get a good qualifying result there today Uh, yeah, after the first two laps it felt good, um, just need to sort out the line a little bit. The uh, section like where we go in between the tracks, if that makes sense, like through the middle of the track, uh, there's not, there's a line but they're going to kind of adapt it once they see like the natural flow is what they said in the briefing. So um, yeah, I just need to probably get that, get that line a bit better through there. but. Everywhere else, there's a load more grip there than I was expecting, so I just need to let the car go a bit more now and stay on throttle because I didn't realise we like it, so it is quite grippy, so it can be can be a lot faster into the corners and stuff. This, you know, we're not going to come. I'm coming up short because I didn't know like if we're going to slide right into the wall or if there's enough grip to stay on throttle longer. There's definitely a lot more grip to stay on throttle longer. So yeah, just going to go back out there and um, try and go faster. One run in, put some tires on it, put some fuel in it, we'll go again.
All right, so practice is done. Uh, we had two sessions. One was an hour and a half long, uh, which was this morning session. The afternoon session has just been just been completed. That was an hour long. So we've had two and a half hours of practice in our group, which is Group A, uh, and we made four laps of the track. So basically, two times out on track. Um, not ideal because uh, it's a very it's 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 quite a technical track. It's not massively fast. Um, but it is quite technical, you know, the walls um, and the inner clips are, yeah, very tight, they're quite technical, so you've got to make sure that you're getting them from the off all the way through the zone to collect all the uh, all the points, because we know in Drift Masters, especially in qualifying, it's really tough, like, scores are nine identical when you start getting up there, so, yeah, it's going to be hard, uh, I'm not looking forward to qualifying at all, because I don't really feel like we've had uh, enough time out on the track to get the car where I want it to be or even my confidence but we'll go out there and I'll just try and drive the wheels off the car and um, going into qualifying it's going to be tricky as well because we're the second car out there in qualifying which is never uh, which is never good you know going very early in qualifying is very difficult to get a strong score because they've got nothing really to reference against so although the judges, I believe, are fair, I think it's going to be difficult for us to get a good score on the first run. So it's going to really come down to our second judged run uh, to make it happen because that, at that point they will have something to reference with all the first runs. So it is what it is. We'll make it work. Uh, just qualifying will be enough. I don't care if I qualify 30th, 31st, 32nd, uh, I don't care where we qualify. Every battle tomorrow is going to be like a final anyway, so it doesn't matter who we go up against, when we go up against them, everybody here is amazing. So, um, in actual fact, to be honest with you, if I qualified quite, uh, you know, if I qualify quite low and get into the position of where I'm battling people that I know that will qualify quite high, like, I don't know, Shanahan's for instance, at least you know what you're going up against. There's quite a few drivers here since I was last here that have come into the championship that I don't know that well and I don't know their driving style, so it might actually be easier if I don't qualify that uh, high. So, but we'll see what happens. Look, I'm not writing it off. I'm just kind of saying that I don't feel that comfortable and I don't feel like we've had a lot of practice and it's going to be very difficult to get a good score given our qualifying, uh, given the giving the qualifying order and the position that we're in but f it just go out there and do what we can do Right about now that I normally turn to Martin Richards and go like, how do you feel mate? And he normally goes, I feel a bit nervous to be honest. And I go, yeah me too. And then we have a little hug, a little chat, a little team talk. But no Martin. So it's just me. And I'm not going to lie, I do feel quite nervous. Only done four laps as I said. Don't really feel like I'm in a comfortable place with the track. Um, but you know, we'll just go out there and give it, every, give it everything we've got. I don't, and we're the only car here from the UK, so I don't want to let anyone down. You know, at the end of the day, it'd be nice to hold up UK drifting and uh, represent the best we can. But I've just got to try and put all that behind me for a minute and just get through, just get through qualifying. If we just get through qualifying, like I said earlier, like wherever we qualify, I don't care because we're just going to have to go for it tomorrow. And whoever we battle, we battle. But right now it's just about getting through qualifying. So just gonna have to give it everything from the beginning. Like hold nothing back. So here goes nothing. I, re I reckon your last lead against um, Clint was fine. Yeah. Right. That'll be like high 80s, I reckon. Yeah, and then well, what the we, second, what the, we the, reckon. I reckon do that one and then the second run push it a bit harder. Right. Well, it's up to you. You know, right. you know, you know, you know what it comes down to, though. You just got to have to, just gonna have to go. I think we just have to go all out, all out, because we're seconds so and they've got nothing to judge against. So whatever happens, our first score, be, be I hard. think, will be like high seventies, maybe, maybe the eighties. 
but it will never end up being enough to qualify. It's 24, is that, yeah? Are we going to go up a little bit? Yes, we were on 20, so we're right. Okay, so your, first, your first two runs were 24, okay, the second fine. two runs were 20. Alright, perfect. Yeah, yeah, that'll be fine. I'll just, and then I can, I can flow it into the walls and get on the yeah, windows. We'll right. wander up. Right. And a man who wowed us all and watched Stadium last year, unfortunate that he was knocked out on a technicality of a debut of a tyre. Steve Banks and Biagioni, our only UK competitor this year in the championship. But you know what, he's flying the flag for the UK high because he is one of the best in these stadium tracks. This crazy V8 powered PS13 roaring into action. Yeah, look at this, flames already for the back end of this PS13 as Bagsy flicks it across the circuit, up closer to the wall. Then Kavir puts the back end of that car right into the pocket, now picks up that front pivot point. Looks for the transition, a little bit closer than Kavir, but still not as close as we'd like to see. A little upset there, you can see corrections on the steering from Bagsy as he now gets into the outside zone, touches the wall, looks for the transition across the circuit. A little shallow there, maybe not as deep as what Kevin O'Connell and the guys would like to have seen, but now back up into the pocket, onto the wall, goes Bagsy, he looks for the finish line, tags the back end off the wall, gets the job done. Well done mate, that was a really nice run. He was a bit shallow on the touch and go, but apart from that I reckon it was still quite high. Coming to the score when you get it. You got a 78 mate. I never, I, I didn't think it would be a high score on my first one, so I was, uh, was kind of hoping maybe it was in the early 80s, 78 is, a, I feel it's a, 78 or 76, 78, I feel it's a little bit harsh maybe, I don't really see cut the little steering corrections but to like lose 23 points or 22 points sorry don't know don't know where I don't know where 22 points but we'll see Right now, fam. Ready and watching. You know where to improve. Enjoy it, mate. Bagsy's got to be watching the same thing right now. The UK driver said, my score on the first run is 78. It's not going to get me there. I need this to be up the order. It certainly does. Well, that puts him in 29th position at the moment. And the man from the UK needs to put it all on the line as Bagsy flicks the car across the circuit. Now wants to risk it. Now starts to feel out the back of that PS13 on the concrete wall. As he comes through, and he's closer on that inner clip than he was before. He's earlier to the wall than he was before now. As Bagsy picks up the pace and he wanders and wavers in outside zone four, but he picks it up right to the end now comes through looks for that touch and go gets it dialed slows it down for outside zone five but he may have scrubbed too much speed he was late getting there as Bagsy looks for the final outside zone across the line he goes now we're seeing everybody up their level well done mate well done i'd say you definitely topped your last score so i'll just wait for the score to come in there all right thanks mate just let me know what the score is when uh when you can and you have to go out there now and put the bumper to the wall. You have to risk the car. There was a few moments for me where Bagsy made some errors, though. He wandered and wavered a little bit in some of those outside zones. But he'll be the first man to tell you that he's not the best at qualifying. The battles is where Bagsy comes alive. He loves the chase driving. But for me, I think he's done enough there to secure a spot in top 32. Well, no, mate, you got 91. You're currently in seventh position. Yeah. 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 Come on, boys! That'll do! That'll do! Uh, there might be a few peaks in there, but yeah, well done, mate. <laughs> that was a good one. Uh, that run was a lot better. Obviously, it was just a bit deeper in the walls and just a little bit more committed. So, between the first and second run, we was in, had a 3.8 something rear diff in it, and we changed it out to a 3.58. So, it just gave him a little bit more wheel speed, and it meant that he wasn't so much higher than the RPMs. So, we. I think we'll lose a little bit of speed, but out of that he's a bit more confident and he's not as far up the limit, so he's not having to back off and you know pedal the car a bit more, he could be a more, bit more flat footed and paid off, he uh, done a good run there, so I think he's pretty happy with a 91, I don't know if like, uh, you heard over the uh, radios, but yeah, I'd say he's pretty happy. <laughs> I thought it was a little bit better, I wasn't 100% sure it was like a jump better, do you know what I mean? Alright, so that's our second run done. Man, that felt good. Uh, we scored a 91, which in Driftmasters is a pretty good score. 
Uh, I feel very relieved. As I've said before, uh, I'm not the best at qualifying and uh, we were definitely sitting uh, way below uh, the top 32, I reckon, uh, with our first score. We were around the 28th, 29th position when I went out for my second run. So I knew that it wasn't going to last long before we were going to like be 33rd. So just had to go out there and just put in the best I possibly could. I just tried to be a lot more fluid, tried to carry speed, uh, just tried to give it more commitment. Uh, every lap that we do, I, I feel like we're getting more information from the track and the car and the grip levels and stuff. So yeah, every, as I said, every lap we do, we're getting, we're getting better and better out there. So hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, going into tomorrow, we've got a bit more practice in the morning and uh, we can pull, pull it together in the top 32 tomorrow. But overall, uh, it feels amazing to have a 91. I think that is actually my highest ever qualifying in Driftmasters. I think that's my highest ever qualifying story. 93. Did we win? Ger no, Germany when you came second, I think it was 93 or something, wasn't it? I think it was quite high that. No. I think I'm my sure highest qualifying score was Plock, maybe like in 2018. And that was only like an 88 or something. Yeah, I'm sure you're 23 right now and you got a 91. I'm sure at some point you've got a 93. But yeah. Coming into today, it's just it's just gonna be is what it is, right? So we've got Jack Shannon first. Um, Jack's had an amazing year. He's up for potentially winning the championship as well. So uh, just gonna go out there, give it everything we've got. We can't leave anything to chance. It's just gonna have to be, we're just gonna have to drive the car like it's a final and just go absolutely flat from the start. Like just take, we're gonna have to basically take every risk we can to try and win and just hope it pays off because if we take it a little bit easy in certain places on the track to try and like not to take too many risks, we're gonna lose. So we have to take all the risks. So yeah, gotta get in the car and go and do some practice laps now, but yeah, see how this goes. had to jump in the car and grab the fire extinguisher out between my legs. Um, I think we got some more blowing out the dipstick. Um, maybe the, I think maybe the O-ring and the, the cable tie that we used to kind of hold it down had, had stretched or broke. So I think some oil squirted out, out the dipstick, landed on the manifolds and created a bit of a fire. Um, it wasn't like a it wasn't like a huge fire, there wasn't loads of smoke or anything, it was just, I could smell burning oil and then Mark spotted like a flames, uh, like flames underneath the bonnet, so luckily Mark got to it pretty quick. Dwayne McKeever came and gave us a hand as well, which was really nice of him because he, he was in the car behind me just as we were rolling out the stadium. He came with his fire extinguisher, but Mark got it sorted with our fire extinguisher out the car, so I'm just going to check everything over, try and clean any of the oil out that's on the car and yeah. I think that'll probably be it for practice. I don't think there's much time left for that. So just make sure the car's working all right. And I guess the next time we're on track will be against Jack Shanahan. Attendance and all that, but I definitely think they've lied about the attendance. There's, there's no one here. There's no one. 
Horseball, horseball, horseball. Like it's empty. And, like you know, 55,000 seat stadium, like, and there's no one sitting around. Or, you know, there's not people all standing here. Definitely lied about the attendance, didn't they? Yeah. We're just about to go. All the cameras are on. Maggie's just getting in the car now. Brother Jack Shanahan now sitting third in the championship. Still mathematically can win this championship tonight. But he will go head to head against one hell of a wild card. Steve Bagsy Biagioni from the UK. And Bagsy has been unstoppable on these tight arena tracks over the years. So has Shanahan. This is almost a final in our top 32. And both of these guys are not going to want to go home this early in the competition. Mate, you got this. Thanks mate, there's a little bit of smoke coming out from under the bonnet but I think it's just old oil so yeah. Here goes nothing. It's a thumbs up all round. The cars bang into gear. It's Bagsy versus Shanahan. This is for the championship. This matters for Shanahan. But Bagsy won't care. We want to take him down in fair form. And look at this. A big dive from Bagsy on initiation. But Shanahan's dialed. He's in the wall. He's dialed all the grip off. But that doesn't matter for Bagsy. He now starts to make that proximity back. And he goes for a big dive across the circuit. As Bagsy turns the screw and looks for the wheel of Shanahan's 86. Right up onto the front goes Bagsy. That was dangerous from the British driver as they come through the centre of the circuit. Shanahan deep into outside zone 5 and once again Banksy into the pocket, onto the door. Shanahan on the wall, Banksy on the back. Well done mate, well done. I'm going to put the pressure on him. Just do a good lead now. Alright, uh, copy that mate. Copy that. So Bagsy is going to be in the lead, Shanahan in the chase. Jack Shanahan, well, at the moment we have only Dwayne McKeever dropping out of that championship hunt. You can see that is a lot of Shanahan tears in the audience right now as Jack Shanahan changes in Steve Bagsy Biagioni. Yeah, Bagsy's gone for a big initiation. Shanahan beside it a little bit and now he finds himself on the front wheel. Bagsy now fires across the circuit. Shanahan finds himself with a wheel on the inside. He needs to clean this one up Does Jack Shanahan. He's going for the replay. He tags the front wheel of Bagsy's car and it upsets the line. Bagsy into the the wall now, foot flat to floor, Jack Shanahan starts to batter and bruise the side of Bagsy's Nissan 200 SX as they get into outside zone 5, Shanahan loses a little ground, he's a little wobbly as the back panel starts to come off of Bagsy's car, That's Shanahan. That's unbelievable, that is unbelievable driving. I'm not too sure on that one, to be honest with you mate, he was on you the whole way round but he was cutting track to keep up proximity, so I think it might come down more to lead to lead than actual chases. Alright mate, copy that, whatever happens we did our best. Thanks guys, I really appreciate all your help this weekend, it's been amazing. What a, what an event. Yeah, well done mate, you've driven incredible, so hopefully we've got it all soon. You know, we, we kind of penalised Bagsy a little bit for being on that front wheel, but Shanahan did exactly the same thing. So really, lead to lead, chase to chase. This is going to come down just to that qualifying line. Who made more mistakes? I'm pretty sure there was some contacts from both of these guys. And you can see, look at Bagsy in the wall, the back end absolutely pinned to it. Well, they held nothing back. They held nothing It's back. all on the track, regardless of the decision. Neither driver are going to be disappointed with that showcase of ability. No, no, not at all. Look at that. Look what it means to the Shanahan fans. They are emotional. And I mean, it's almost emotional for everybody here because they know how much it matters. Jack Shanahan, Steve Bagsy Biagioni, decisions will drop in. And it's a one more time. It's a one more time. Yeah, it was exciting. It was good. Intense. Very intense. Because it is Jack Shannon and Bagsy, and I don't know if I have the heart for another one of these because that was sensational the first time around. What happens is they lose their mind a little bit. So they go, oh, if that wasn't good enough, I'm going to push a little bit exactly. harder in the so, wall. So I need to touch it yep. more. We need to be closer on transitions. And all of that ends in tears. Yeah. Misery. They, they're going to have to push to a place where they're yeah, both I, I, uncomfortable. I'm a little nervous on this one. I think they both push to a place where they're both uncomfortable and they know they might risk the car. But here we go. For Jack, the championship's on the line. Yeah. He will risk the car. He'll throw everything away for Bagsy. He doesn't care. He'll risk the car for a chance to get on a podium here at Drift Masters. They fire in. Bagsy goes for a different approach on initiation. He doesn't lose him this time. Now Shanahan buried into the wall, but Bagsy buried onto the door. That GT86 through they come on that front living point. Bagsy gives him the room to maneuver. Now dives it on an outside zone four. And look at this. Bagsy once again finds the front wheel. Shanahan cleaner on those outside zones. And Bagsy appears through the smoke and he's closer than he was before. Now turns the screw! Jack oh, it's Shanahan! He spun it. Shanahan over-rotated it. Yeah, he spun it on Arizona 5 to me, and the Irish fans are think, cheering. Yeah, I think the Irish. I think they think it was contact, but I think Jack's over-rotated that. That was my first opinion there. Thank you, Sam. Something's very broke on the car. No, it's broken. Something's 
We've already broken the car, mate. We're going to need wide flap change. Yeah, I'm on my way back down. Uh, Mark, if you start to get tie rods and all that ready, uh, it sounds like a tie rod. I don't know what's wrong. I think something's wrong with the wide flap, maybe on the steering rack. Roger that, roger that. Uh, front end, do you know what side it is? I'll take it left side, yeah? Yeah, left side for sure. Uh, I'm going to have to be lifted out. Okay, yeah, roger that. Give us a bit more time, luckily. So we had contact with Jack, uh, I think he was over rotating rather than like um, me hitting him and then he spun. But anyway, with the crash bar hit the floor so hard after hitting Jack's car that I thought I'd snap something bad on the front. But they removed the crash bar, drove around the arena and everything kind of feels alright. So boys are just going to check everything now, make sure everything's fine. As we've got a competition yeah. timeout because the judges have deemed Jack at fault. So. It's a nice lead now mate, keep your chill. Well, here we go. They're back on the line, Dave. It's the last run of the 32. The, the last run of our top 32, the last battle to be decided. We will be back this afternoon, later on today, with our top 16, where things are going to get hotter again, Dave. The championship's really going to start coming alive. You think it's been fireworks now? It'll be fireworks later on tonight. There we go. They look across to the light. Shanahan slots himself into position. Bagsy off the line. Shanahan's going to give it his all. Is the car ready? Is he ready? Is he going to make a mistake? Will Bagsy perform? Oh! Shanahan makes a huge mistake there. There is a problem with that car. Bagsy glues it to the wall and now starts to drive away as he fires through that inner clip. Jack gets himself back into it, but the car's hurt, Dave. The yeah. car is hurt. And Jack says, I'm just going to try and do anything I can. And you know what? What a sad way to see Jack Shanahan go out after so many hard rounds of competition. Bagsy sticks into outside zone five. He looks for the final zone. Jack jumps on the door and Bagsy taps the roof and says, fair play, we did it like men. And you got to give it up to Steve Bagsy behind Gioni coming back here and I mean the level rises every year here and he's come back and he's, he's jumped in the ring with the, with the big dogs and he's got the win and he goes through to the top 16 and there's two good friends behind the scenes and, and they know that it's a competition on the track and then it's all smiles at the end and Jack Shannon well now he's going to put the overalls on now he's head mechanic Jack Shannon for Connor Shannon who could still bring home the joy to the Shanahan's tonight Somehow it's knocked the pin out on the Ackerman washer on the other side, the whole part of the square, and it span it. That means I have to change the whole hole, which is a job. But if it's driving fine, Martin on his car, he said it's four ways, not Adam, just adjust them and tighten them up. But if it's fine how it is now, I'll just tighten them up and leave them. Rather yeah, than I think adjust. it was fine. Yeah, I'll tighten when it up. When I went out there, I thought it was wrong. I thought the same was up because um, we had a bit of understeer when I was doing the burnout box warming the tyres up. I think it's just because I picked up a lot of rubber. I mean, too many. plates on it and check it, but as long as you're happy with it, but none of the tyre rods or anything are bent. It's just literally the Ackerman, the washer that sits for the Ackerman. Change that it took the two, the two pins, it will twist it. But if I change the knuckle, it's got the um, uh, camber adjustment on it and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. Just leave it alone then. Dry spot, I'll just yeah, tighten, it, I'll tighten it up where it is now. In the drift, the I think it was fine. It was just when I was walking the tires out, but that could have been too much. That, that could have been loads of rubber on it. Look around. This is crazy. Absolutely crazy. Like it's insane. Alright, so yeah, top 32, Jack Shanahan, uh, exciting battle, uh, I just gave it everything we had, uh, judges deemed it one more time, I think Jack won the lead and I won the chase from what I heard, um, so yeah, going into top 16 now uh, in this incredible stadium against uh, Laurie Heidenen, uh, he's second in the championship right now, he's got it all on the line, um, so it's his to take to keep that championship fight going. I'm just going to do what we were, we were, what we've what done against Jack. I'm just going to keep going. I don't feel like we're going to change anything with the car. Just make sure it's the same as it was before we had that big knock with uh, Jack. Just, yeah, I'm just going to leave it where it is and just keep pushing as hard as we possibly can and just see how far we can go. Uh, stoked to have made it this far. Yesterday I was saying to everybody in my team, like, I'll just be stoked if I can qualify because qualifying at Drift Masters now is incredibly tough. You've got to have a 90 point score really to guarantee you're in uh, top 32. Yeah, just going to keep going as we are. Hopefully we can just 
keep pushing forward, take it one battle at a time, and uh, yeah, just try and just try. Won't make any crazy changes. Just keep pushing. I don't know who's chasing first. I'm chasing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Perfect. I'm chasing first all the way to the final. Same thing again. Just do them. Chase what you did against Connor. Give it all your all. Then afterwards, obviously, you do your normal lead. Like put pressure on him in the chase. Then you just need to only fire back. You've got to do your lead. If Steve Bagsby Biagi only takes out Laurie Heinehan, Connor Shanahan steps closer to one hand on the trophy. So now Heinen has got to take down the man on form, Steve Bagsy Biagione. If Heinen wants this championship, if he wants it to be the perfect year, if he wants to be the guy, he has to go through the guy who is feeling it tonight, which is Steve Bagsy Biagione. And let's be honest, these cars are pretty much the same horsepower, pretty much the same grip, pretty much the same setup. This is driver versus driver right here. And Bagsy, nothing to lose in the championship. Pressure off, everything's a bonus. Heinhen, everything to lose. All the pressure. But he's got the finished flags waving flat high in the stadium. The fans are ready to see if Heinen can take it home for them. Finland have been stronger than any fan base this year, but they need it from Heinen now. They certainly do, and they're taking on a man that is world class. And wow, look at the initiation! from Bagsy, smashes Laurie Heinen into the wall. Both cars lose body panels. Bagsy's hungry for this one as they fire through. That front clipping point that Bagsy has Bagsy to shut it down. Car. He went too heavy, it's something broken in the back of Bagsy's car. Happened there, mate? I think the diff fell out of the car. Either the diff or the gearbox is broken. What do you want me to do, Sam? Yeah, there's nothing we can do, mate, unfortunately. I think that's out. That's out. There's no five minute rule, so. And there's no five minute rule unless it's competition timeout, which obviously I don't think that is. I think that's a drivetrain failure. I'm not sure what's broken or where, but... So I'm going to actually talk to Kevin O'Connell here, because Kevin, this is not going to come down to a judging decision, because there's still one run left. So which uh, driver has been asserted, uh, which fault, fault of the driver? We saw both guys go on the wall. Who did you blame for that incident? Well, first, Dave, actually, we have to determine it. Was the mechanical failure from Bagsy actually caused by the contact from the both drivers? And we have a body at different camera angles here, and what we were trying to determine was, was the driveline failure or the mechanical issue of Bagsy caused by this impact here? We have, we've trawled through every single camera angle and because Bagsy continues the run afterwards and we actually did get word from Bagsy himself to say that it was an unrelated failure, we have determined that it was of no cause. So therefore, it doesn't really matter about the contact in the end of it. What we have to say is that Bagsy got an incomplete, he stopped driving and therefore all Lowry has to do is finish off the run. Well, there you have it, Ian. Well, there you go. We were, we were so we were far. Away. We, we, were, were away. we were in a different country with our assumption, <laughs> and we just came all the way back to the stadium, and there you go. Didn't matter who was at fault. You can discuss that amongst yourselves at home. It doesn't matter because Laurie Heinen made it back to the start line, and because Bagsy continued half a lap without the drive line failure, therefore, we don't. the proof isn't there that that caused it. No. Judges can only go by what they see, and therefore, Laurie Heinen is going to, with half a car, go into the top eight and stay in the championship fight. What a night of drama, Ian. What a night of drama. I wonder if they banged wheels. I'm wondering if we snap that through shaft on the diff again. Because yeah. it just went gone. Wait, it went, it's out after inside two, he transitioned back, and then he went to go drive, and then all sorts of two flash outside, I guess, which like hit the limiter and banged two yeah. flames out yeah. of it, and then it just straightened and rolled out of it. So. But then I don't think he's dragging anything because you hear it. No, it didn't. So I don't think it's close to nice prop, and smooth. So, so if it was proper bolts, you know, it'd be clacking and making all kinds of noise. And weird, it was like just so clean. At the same time, like. And if it had been a shaft or something, I... 110 was a bit too much. 110. 110%. Oh. <laughs> no, it's good. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't really know what went wrong, to be honest with you. Uh, well, I know what went wrong. I I hit him on entry. That's what went wrong. I shouldn't I shouldn't have been so, so aggressive. But to be honest with you, it's one of the, it's, it was always going to be... Every battle is just like you have to give it everything you've got. And it's you have to be at 100%. Like you literally have to drive at 100%. And if you go like 105, 110%, it was contact. And there was contact because I just threw it in. Because I knew he's fast. Like I, I could even see his tires. They were like, they were like nigh on flat on the start line. So I was like, he's going to be quick. If he can handle the grip, he's going to be quick. So I just gave it everything I had, flicked it in hard behind him. We made contact and about halfway through the corner or maybe just towards the end of the corner, I lost drive. So we're not quite sure yet. It, I've got a feeling it's the prop shaft that's given given out, or maybe it's something to do with the differential, because I think we might have gone wheel to wheel, which is what's caused like a bit of a bang to the drivetrain. So Sam and Mark are gonna have a look now, see what's wrong, and um, I'm gonna watch the replay, replay back.
and uh, then probably enjoy the rest of the event because I'm exhausted. No, like prop shaft, I mean. Oh, right. Oh, so there you go. It's prop shaft. The UJ has a Jecto Cito from the prop shaft. Right. No prop hook, you have no arsehole. So this bit here should be connected to this bit here, but this bit come undone from this bit. Mmm, sad times. No drive. Alright, so that is us done here at Driftmasters. It's not the way I wanted the cookie to crumble, it is what it is. Uh, I came in hot and made contact with the wall, made contact with Laurie. In my opinion, I was going at the same speed as the car in front of me. He was going too hot, he hit the wall, I hit the wall, I hit him. Yeah, we hit, we had impact. It was a pretty heavy hit on the car. Uh, I managed to get another, I don't know, quarter, half a lap in and then uh, the prop shaft failed which is weird uh, I think it's to do with the hit the judges have got some information from somewhere that I don't know where they got it from because it wasn't from me but they're saying the judges said on the live stream that, that I had said that the damage to the car that stopped us drifting was unrelated to the hit on the wall now I never said that I don't know where they got that information from because it wasn't me I think one of the one of the marshals has come up to me and said can you continue and I said probably not the prop shaft or the drive shaft or the diff or whatever had broken um, I wasn't sure at that point because I stood on track but I knew that the car wasn't moving under its own steam so I don't know it's complicated it's weird it is what it is I don't know where they got the information from but anyway in reality maybe it is my fault for going too hot going too fast and uh, just parking it into into lorry so it is what it is uh, we'll get the car fixed we move on um, for salmon Ian are going to jam on the car tomorrow before the car heads off to Spain on Monday as we've got a demo in Spain next weekend and uh, yeah we'll get the car sorted it's a bit bat battered and bruised but we've had an amazing time here at Drift Masters this is not a sour uh, conversation it's been an insane event Drift Masters has done an amazing job with the stadium having this huge event here and uh, I've been I've been very very grateful to be allowed to be a part of it it's been an amazing night top 32 with Jack and bailing out of the top 16 is not the end of the world uh, just qualifying uh, and making it through to top 16 is an, in my opinion uh, an amazing achievement by anybody so I'm proud of me and my team uh, for how far we've come in this event and uh, yeah looking forward to maybe coming back next year so for now the boys will get on with the car and uh, yeah try and get it looking a bit better than it does now because it looks like it's been through war so anyway i'll leave you there and uh i'll catch you in the next one i mean i won't buy you that hot dog now <laughs> No more hot dogs, Steve. Too many Polish No more hot dogs. <laughs> I don't know why you're filming my ugly face, dude. Look at...